Hi everyone, it's Eel of the World and today I'm showing you how I made my Tifa Lockhart cosplay from Final Fantasy VII Remake. This was made for KupoCon and I actually got the tickets for KupoCon only a week prior so I had one week to make this entire outfit. I did originally plan on buying a costume but all of the ones I could find were either from Japan, China or America and obviously none of those are going to get to the UK in time so I opted to make one myself. I am so happy with how it came out, it's definitely one of my favourite cosplays ever. I'm so excited to share it with you so without further ado, let's begin. So we're starting off with the front of the skirt and this is of course two pieces of fabric sewn together, one is pleated, one is just flat, then this is the picture of the front and back panels sewn together. For this cosplay I used a pattern that I found on Etsy but I made a lot of alterations to it, I did not use it exactly how it came. For example I added a few more belt loops than shown and just some of the construction I just did a little bit differently. I would recommend buying at least two meters of your fabric. I used a very cheap fabric which was like a leathery fake leather type of fabric and it's better to have too much than too little because this type of fabric does tend to peel a little bit, especially if you have a big wad of it underneath the foot on your sewing machine. It does tend to catch on the teeth and just peel off. These are the pockets and the pockets are actually separate to the skirt. So in the pattern it described putting them on with like poppers, like those poppers that you get on like a bed case. But I didn't want to do that because I just know that it wasn't gonna stay on. So I threaded a belt through the skirt and then I attached some belt loops onto the sides of the pockets and I just kind of threaded everything through that way. It was a lot more durable and I think it just looks better in the end. Now for these dangly parts, you have two options here. I made mine of the same fabric that I made my skirt from, but it also can look really good if you use like nylon straps, like a similar kind of thing to what the belt is made of so if you want to do that that will also look just as cool i made sure that the pockets were actually real pockets that you could use because i never like to carry a bag at these places <laughs> so i like to incorporate some sort of storage system into all of my cosplays which is what I did right here. They're very deep pockets as well. So as I was explaining before, this type of fabric does tend to peel on certain areas. The places I had this the most were kind of around the seams, so where this pleat was joined onto the skirt. So I'm using this black eyeliner. Obviously you can use like a black pen instead to do this, and you just color in the part that is showing. I would advise you to stay clear from using a permanent marker pen, just because this can mark on the fabric and you'll be able to tell the difference in shades of black from where you've used this. Once this is drawn on, no one will be able to tell. Now for Tifa suspenders, I did something a little bit different here. I actually got some pre-made black suspenders, then I cut these like long, like hexagonal, rectangle, whatever they're called, shapes, out of the same fabric that I used for the skirt. What I'm doing here is I'm going to be sewing it directly onto the suspender straps. Now, when you sew this, don't sew it so it's like stuck on the suspenders, like sew around it so it can slide freely up and down. Basically leave the ends free. So you sew the sides on both sides, then you just sew a little bit up just to kind of like keep it in position more. And then that will just slide up and down on your shoulders. So for the shoes, these actually started their life out as a pair of grey fleeced lace-up boots. Um, I was actually going to throw them away, I was selling them on Vinted, 
and I couldn't get any boots that were lace up so I decided to repurpose these ones and I took the sale down. So I used a red leather paint, you can get this on Amazon, all of the stuff in this video is mainly from Amazon, may I just add. So this is a red leather paint and I liked it because my shoes are grey underneath so with this red leather paint, one coat of this was enough to just give it a kind of worn out look. I didn't want them to look brand new, hence why I'm using like old shoes that I'm repurposing. Um, I used this brush firstly just to paint on all the spots, but this doesn't have to be neat at all. The only thing I was being careful of is to not get it on that fleece at the top of the shoe. So once this was done, I took a sponge, and this is just an ordinary kitchen sponge, and I began dabbing the paint onto the shoe, and I also began swiping it around. So you can kind of apply it in the same way that you would apply shoe polish in that kind of swiping motion or dabbing motion. And this just helps to kind of get the paint into all the little crevices of the shoe. You don't want to just paint this on with a brush because you end up seeing all of the individual brush strokes and it just looks really bad. So I would always recommend just get like a sponge or, or something like that and just dab it on. I only needed one coat of this paint because I still wanted the grey to kind of peek through and give it that worn out look. So just one coat was enough for me but I would always recommend do one coat, let it fully dry, have a look at it, and then decide if you want a second coat or not. Because you can always put more on, but it's very hard to take it off and start again. So always just take your time and go slow with this. Now for the soles of the shoes, I took this pen. Now I don't know what in the world you would be using it for if it wasn't for this, because this pen is specifically designed to draw on the soles of shoes. I got it from Amazon, I've never heard of anything like this before. I don't know why any ordinary person that isn't a cosplayer would ever buy one of these unless they just wanted all of the soles of their shoes to be black. But I found it and I just thought it was so good that I just had to get it. So it's really weird, it's kind of like a permanent marker in the way that it is pumped but you have to like pump it like a paint pen up and down up and down with the nib and then you just smear all of the black onto the shoe again it's really cool for cosplayers but i don't know what an ordinary person would be using this for i really tried to like sit there and think the only thing that it could possibly be is maybe when schools say like you can't have like a tick like the nike tick or an adidas logo on your shoe and then you can colour it out, but then at that point, why would you buy the brand? Like, you could just buy a normal shoe. Anyway, I, I just don't understand, like, what this is for. <laughs> but there you go. <laughs> so then you just continue doing this around all of the sole of the shoe. I just did it on the visible parts. Of course, do not bother to just put it on the bits where you walk on, because you're going to end up ruining the pen, no one's going to see it, it's just a waste of time and money. So just do it on the visible parts that people will see, and then the shoes are done. Now for Tifa's tops. So this is the easiest part of the entire cosplay, and you basically just need two sports bras, one black, one white, get them exactly the same brand. Mine actually came as a two-pack, so it is literally the exact same thing but twice. So the idea of this is they're going to end up layered on top of each other. So the white one has to be smaller in order for the black one to show. So what I did was I took the white one, I pinned it inwards, I just took like a really tiny amount off of all of the sides and I also just cut the bottom right up until, I don't know if you can see in the video but there's like a ribbed line right there. So that is where I used as a guide to stop sewing. It will look absolutely tiny when you cut this and when you pin this, but when you wear it, it stretches out and it will fit you. If it fitted you in the beginning, it will fit you after doing this. Then you simply just sew along all of the lines that you've pinned in, just very gently on the edge. Use a top stitch if you want to, and that is literally all you have to do for Tifa's top. Now for Tifa's gauntlet. Now this was one of the most fiddly parts of the cosplay, but I really enjoy making props, so I don't really mind. This was actually the first pattern I'd ever worked with for a foam. 
normally when it comes to weapons and stuff I kind of just make my own thing and I don't really use a pattern so this was the first ever time that I've ever used a pattern and I will of course leave it linked in the description box below but the first step is to cut out all of the pieces onto your foam now it does detail to use six millimeter four millimeter and two millimeter foam but I just used loads of two millimeters stacked on top of each other and it worked just as well i couldn't get hold of all of the sizes in time otherwise i would have done but just know if you have only one size of foam you can make it work so here i am sticking everything together i'm using contact adhesive this I got from Wilco's and it was about £2.50. Um, I didn't use like a really expensive brand or anything. This one worked just as well. And I still have loads of it left over. I would just recommend opening a window of course when you do this because it does really, really stink. Um, here I am just cutting out the little holes in the arm guard. Just really take your time with this because the foam does break really easily. Even if it feels strong, it will definitely break. So just take your time with it. So once I assembled the main part of the arm guard, I'm using this heat gun just to heat up the inside of it and then I am moulding it onto my arm. You can mould this onto anything but I find it works the best when you just put it directly onto the thing that you want it on. Just be careful because it does really get really really hot so um, like let it cool a tiny bit and then put it on your arm. I've stacked them all together and glued them together as you can see and all of the bits that needed to be painted I did that before sticking them together, it will just make it easier. Some of the red paint actually peeled off of a lot of the parts and I kept it because I thought it gave it like a weathered worn look so I didn't bother to do like loads of coats, I just left it like that and I think it looked really cool. You're going to have to heat up and bend all of them. You can also just like kind of pinch it in half with your fingers, that tends to work as well. But before you assemble anything together, just make sure that they're all heated, they're all bent together, and it will give you a much easier time. So I forgot to actually film it here, but the buttons of the arm guard I actually made out of clay. I used an air dry clay and I just kind of press them into the shape that I wanted and the width that I wanted. Just make sure that you kind of make them all similar as much as you can. And then I just painted them red and this is the outcome. Not actually shown here but the way I kind of assembled everything together and got it onto my arm was to use nylon straps and their little clicky clipper things. I put this onto all of the parts just like the pattern suggested and I wore it. Now at the con it did end up breaking because it's just a little bit too fragile the way the foam is so what I did afterwards was glue some fabric into the inside of it just to give those straps a little bit more reinforcement and that seemed to do the trick. So Tifa has black sleeves on both arms, one of them is underneath her arm guard and one of them is just on her arm. I got these gloves, these are meant to be like fake latex gloves but they they're nothing like latex at all. I don't even know why I own these. They were they were just in my room. I don't know why I purchased them, but I just had them laying around. So I just cut off the hands. Once I had cut off the hands, I just sewed down the tops of the gloves, so just the raw edge, and that was just to ensure that it didn't fray while I was wearing them or start falling apart. Then after that, I wore these fingerless leather gloves on the top, and that just completed the whole look. So that is the end of my Tifa Lockhart cosplay tutorial. I really hope you enjoyed it. This is definitely one of my favourite cosplays so far. I really loved wearing this one. The beginning part was actually filmed in the same style as the rest of the video. However, my SD card decided that it was going to format and it deleted all of the footage. So that's why I had to use my Instagram story to actually show you what was going on at that part. If you have any questions at all, please let me know and I'll be happy to answer them. If you were at KupoCon, who did you cosplay as and did we meet each other or did you see me? Let me know that in the comments too. Give this video a like if it helped you out and remember to subscribe to my channel if you're not already. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.